The standard pyroprobe filaments come in two styles, a ribbon and a coil, and I'm showing them both here. I'll come in for a closer look. The ribbon probe is just a flat piece of platinum, and the sample is put directly onto the platinum for heating. And the coil probe is a spiral of platinum, and the sample is put into a quartz tube or a quartz boat. The quartz tubes look like this. They generally have some quartz wool in them to hold the sample in place, and the quartz boat is like a little canoe made out of quartz, and you can put a liquid sample directly into that. The first thing to remember when you're making a sample for pyrolysis is that the sample is going on to a gas chromatograph. So the total amount of sample has to be compatible with a capillary GC column, and that's a very small amount. Typically, we want to operate in the range of about 100 micrograms, and to give you an idea of what that looks like, I'm going to take a regular one microliter syringe and put one microliter of a water solution right here. One microliter of water is a milligram. And that's about 10 times as much sample as we want. So I'm going to come in here a little closer. This is a typical sample in a quartz tube. You can see there's a small piece of black rubber in there. It's about 100 micrograms. Once you've cut the sample the size you want it, this is the sample I'm going to analyze, and this again is about a milligram of material to give you a rough idea. We want about one-tenth of that or less. We want to put it inside the quartz tube. I've taken a quartz tube here, filled it with quartz wool. I'm going to insert it into the end of a rubber bulb, and then using the suction of the rubber bulb, just suck the sample up into the quartz tube, and then put the quartz tube into the pyroprobe for analysis. Once you have the sample prepared in the quartz tube, the easiest way to get the tube into the coil is to use the tube loader, which comes with the pyroprobe. It just slides over the coil like that, and then you pick up the tube, and it goes into the end and just drops in. And then when you remove this, the quartz tube is inside the coil of the probe. It slides right in because the bottom of the tube is, is fire polished. There are two ways to put a sample onto the ribbon probe. You can take a small piece, particularly a polymer, that will melt at a low temperature, place it directly onto the filament, use the dry function to warm the sample and make it stick to the filament, and then put it into the pyroprobe. The other way to use the ribbon filament is to take a solution and apply using a syringe, you apply the, the solution directly onto the surface of the filament right in the center. So you then have your solvent right in the middle. Use the dry function to remove the residual solvent and that leaves the solid material left as a residue right on the filament of the pyroprobe. The standard coil pyroprobe can be used for liquid samples, either viscous liquids or solutions by taking a quartz tube, filling it with quartz wool, and then using a microliter syringe to put the sample down inside the quartz tube where the quartz wool is. In that case, the quartz wool, you can see it here, in that case the quartz wool is used to suspend the liquid you can then allow the solvent to dry if there is one, or if it's a, if it's a liquid sample like a, a viscous oil, just then place the quartz tube into the coil of the pyroprobe and put the probe into the interface. The pyroprobe autosampler uses a slightly longer tube, same diameter but slightly longer. This is the standard quartz tube that's used in the regular quarter-inch probe. This is the quartz tube that's used in the autosampler. It's a little bit longer. And you can put a sample in that in uh, one of two ways. Now, on, on the Pyroprobe auto sampler, when the sample is loaded into the auto sampler, it actually sits vertically, whereas the quartz tube in the manual Pyroprobe sits horizontally. So 
the sample is going to be sitting like this in the carousel waiting to be analyzed. So you can put some quartz wool into here and then put the sample in some more quartz wool or to get good sample placement you can use one of the quartz rods. This has a filler rod, this tube has a filler rod in it and you can see that the tube, this is the bottom of the tube and the quartz filler rod comes up to here and then the sample would just sit on top of that. You can put a little quartz wool on top of that if you want 